Today's project is a Ford F-350 King Ranch with a 6-liter diesel engine. After just a few miles of driving, I noticed my fuel mileage was beginning to plummet and my power and acceleration were declining rapidly. Soon I would be unable to make it home, so I began troubleshooting the situation and concluded that I had sticking brakes. The Super Duty trucks are prone for brake problems, so I decided it was time for an extreme brake overhaul. A brake spoon and a soft cloth can remove the center cap from the wheel without damage to the chrome finish. Let gravity be your friend. Break the lug nuts loose before jacking up the vehicle. Securely support it with jack stands before removing the wheel. Front wheels have a big advantage. You can rotate the wheel to allow easier access to the brake hardware. The discoloration is a result of the overheated brakes. Now let's turn our attention to the passenger side front brakes. With the wheel turned, I can get quite a bit of leverage with an extra long breaker bar. To remove the brake rotor, we must first remove the brake carrier. I have now moved on to the back brakes. Notice the very large pan underneath the caliper. That's not only to catch the fluid, but any brake hardware to prevent it from getting lost. The C-clamp recesses the brake piston and allows the brake caliper to come free. Note, the rear brake pistons are much smaller than the front. During braking, the load is shifted forward, putting increased pressure on the front brakes. Therefore, they must be larger. The rear rotor serves two purposes. One, the primary disc brakes, and two, the emergency drum brakes. I used my mechanics creeper because I once punctured a brand new oil pan sliding it out from under the car. I found a breaker bar to be invaluable getting the brake carrier bolts free. I saved myself a trip by using an ATV jack as a rolling dolly and a lift table for the brake rotors. I took three rotors to the auto parts store to be turned, but one didn't make the cut. Now is a good time to begin tearing down the brake calipers. Notice the bright red color of the charred piston seals. A stop block must be used to prevent one piston from dislodging fully before the other begins. The composite piston could not withstand the heat and is breaking down into a white powder. I temporarily reinstalled one piston because the other was jammed. To begin the cleaning process, I must first remove the dust seals and the O-rings from the piston bores. I applied 90 psi of air through the brake hose port with an air gun. In this example, I used a brake carrier as a piston stop. By turning the caliper upside down, you self-contain the piston. One piston was seized, so I reseated the other with a clamp and applied pressure once again. In this example, I used three brake pads as piston stops. Once again, I had one stuck piston. I reseated it with a clamp and tried again. I was unable to remove it with air pressure, so I chiseled it away until I was below the inner seal and then blew it free. These sliding pins were so seized that I had to use an impact driver to break most of them free. Normally they would be removed with your fingers, but I had to use a crowbar to pry them free. One was so badly seized, even the impact driver wouldn't free it up. I had to use a breaker bar and work it back and forth. Once I removed all the hardware, I began the cleaning process. If you don't have access to a sandblaster, a wire wheel and a drill press or a bench grinder can be a good alternative. The wire wheel does a fantastic job of burnishing and polishing the metal and giving it some tooth so the paint will stick.
Notice I'm gripping the bolt with the teeth on the pliers going the same direction as the threads on the bolt. Muriatic acid removes rust from iron but must not be used on chrome or aluminum. It's a strong acid that can give amazing results but must be handled with care. Use it only in a well-ventilated area with protective gloves and eyewear. After a little bit of soaking and a little bit of brushing, the, the results are amazing. Muriatic acid makes a great final step, getting into the cavities and crevices untouched by the wire wheel. With the cleaning complete, it's time to turn our attention to painting. I used bolts to protect the brake caliper threads from overspray. I also used the rubber seals to protect the brake caliper carrier's finished areas. Finally, I stuck the brake bolts through the brake rotor to protect the threads while I painted the heads of the bolts. I applied several light coats of brake caliper paint and let them cure in the sun. Overspray must be removed before the assembly can begin. To clean the brake caliper bores, I used a cup brush with a drill extension to allow clearance for the drill. The brush did a fine job of cleaning the lower surface, but it left a bare spot in the center where the cup wouldn't reach, so I stuffed it with steel wool and went after it with another round. Now I switched to a standard brush to clean the side walls of the piston bore and the seal groove. The rear calipers have a smaller piston. To get the brush started, I angled it slightly and turned it on and let the drill pull it in. With the final cleaning complete, it's time to start the rebuilding process. I am using a synthetic DOT3 brake fluid to lubricate the seals, pistons, and the caliper bore. Lubricate the piston seal, slip it into the caliper bore groove, and check it carefully to make sure it's fully seated. Lubricate the brake piston with brake fluid, including the dust seal groove. This brake seal has no reinforcing rib. I found it easier to lubricate the seal, slip it onto the piston, and then slide it all the way to the bottom of the piston With the dust seal overhanging the piston, slip it carefully into the piston bore and seat the lip of the seal into the piston bore and then carefully manipulate the piston into alignment and press it slowly into position. Slipping the bottom of the seal in first and then slowly working your way around the circumference allows you to more easily get the seal in place. With both pistons carefully aligned into their bores, I'm going to use the jaw horse to apply slow, even pressure and pump the pistons gradually home into their bores. This Lyle tool was specially designed for dual piston calipers. It also works, but it has its limitations. Sometimes the pressure seems less than adequate and to fully seat the pistons in this example would require some blocking. If you don't have access to either of these tools, a C-clamp with a wooden block could press the piston into the bore with the calipers rebuilt and the rotors turned, it's time to begin reinstallation of the brakes. Use a lint-free cloth saturated with alcohol to remove any oil from the braking surface. After installation, wipe the exterior surface with alcohol to remove any fingerprints. I used Linux synthetic cutting oil as an assembly lube for all my threaded hardware. It makes hand starting bolts and nuts much easier. A rust-free caliper carrier will allow the brake pads to slide smoothly in the grooves and prevent binding. Synthetic brake grease applied to the back of the pads helps prevent squealing and sticking. The caliper pins are also lubricated with this synthetic grease. 
You may recall the sliding pins being so tight I had to remove them with an impact driver. Also notice they're not threaded but held in place by the rubber boot. To install the caliper, align it with the brake pads and then press in the sliding pins to compress the rubber boot. When installing the brake hose, be sure to use one copper sealing washer on each side of the brake hose terminal block. To prevent the sliding pins from rotating as I tighten the caliper, I held them with a pair of slip joint pliers. Torquing the brake hose banjo bolt will prevent leaks. It's time to repeat the process for the front brakes. Now we're on the home stretch, bleeding the brakes. Thoroughly clean the master cylinder before removing the cap to prevent contamination from spilling in as the cap is removed. I thoroughly flushed the brake system. Let's look at the results. These bottles illustrate the condition of the brake fluid. They're arranged in the order that I bled the brakes. The right rear is the most contaminated, followed by the right front. The left bottles are nearly identical and show much less contamination. Before installing the wheels on my freshly overhauled brakes, I decided to give them a thorough cleaning to match the rest of the system. With the wheels clean and dry, it's time to install them. If lifting the tire is a challenge, lift with your knees and press in with your hands. If working from a seated position, lift with your toes and press with your hands. Be sure to torque the lug nuts in sequence to 150 foot-pounds. When the job was completed, I did a test drive to compare the before and after temperatures of the brakes. After analyzing the readings, I came to some interesting discoveries. The front brakes are about 50% cooler than the rear brakes. Even my best reading was improved by more than 100% from 250 degrees down to 120 degrees. Thank you for watching. Please leave any suggestions or comments you may have and don't forget to subscribe.